Hey there folks, welcome back to Let's Play Station Fall, I'm Serious JG. Last time, it didn't seem like a very productive video, I kind of explained how we got back to where we'd been. We did find the uh, spacesuit in a locker in the flop house, and I showcased the various ways that things can go wrong when you try to explore the airlock. But right now, we've got the um, Arcturian balloon creature chillaxin. One thing we want to do here is, um, we saw that note from the... Uh, for Doc Martin saying that his ostrich nip had come in and that it was going to be stored in the ceiling. Uh, we would have to think that that note came from the pet store owner. So you can check the ceiling uh, in Doc Martin's and you don't find anything. So if you look at the ceiling here, as you look carefully, you notice something the casual inspection of the pet store would never have uncovered a panel mounted in the ceiling. If you open the panel, open the panel reveals a stick of ostrich nip. Get nip. Taken. Floyd tells you how much it hurts to repair dents. Put nip in bag. There's no room in the plastic bag for the stick of ostrich nip. Okay, so uh, not being a dick. Um, I'm blanking on your name now, so let me look it back up. It's like, it wasn't Lash Lou, it was Sergio LaRue. Um, yeah, the thing about the plastic bag, I think I believe the plastic bag has just very little uh, room for anything. So what if we put nip in kit? Done. What else have we got? We can get put taffy in nip. Put foil and taffy in kit. Done with the foil, but for the vacuum taffy, there's no room in the survival kit for vacuum taffy. Put taffy in bag. Oh, sorry, it already is. Um, but vacuum taffy is already in the plastic bag. Let's take a stroll, Floyd. Tagging along after the simpleton human is becoming tiresome. He breezes out, Floyd hesitates, then follows. Alright, so it looks like uh, we're not really getting anything out of... Um, Not really getting much of anything out of the bag and the kit. They both just have some space for items, but not much. The Greasy Straw. The Galaxy's Best Zero G restaurant lies lies the sign over the counter of this deserted dive. Exits lead northeast and southwest. You cast a whiff of something mouthwatering. Floyd meander, meanders in. You doing anything fun? Nope. Same old dumb, boring things. Look at counter. Because they do tell you something mouthwatering. Is there any spot? A cup of... Remotion fire nectar behind the counter. Get cup. Put cup in kit. There's no room. Floyd talks about Lazarus again. Put cup in bag. Done. Southwest. Main Street. Southwest again. We've read the, the description's coming up like we haven't been here because I guess I have not been here in my off screening. This large space dog, I'll read it just in case. This large space tube is the main thoroughfare of a space village which has sprung up here on the outskirts of the space station, which lies to the north. Rather than the bustling thoroughfare you might expect, however, there isn't a soul in sight. Openings lead up, northeast, south, and west. To the southeast, the street narrows and ramps downwards. I thought there was something southwest. No, south. Bank. There's a platinum detector. All right, get detector, turn on detector, detector is quietly beeping, get foil, drop foil, Floyd paces impatiently, Floyd yawns and looks bored, north, there's no longer, I mean getting a message the detector is beeping. I get that message when I'm in the same room as the foil. So drop detector. Floyd picks out the platinum detector, examines it, and tucks it under his arm. So now Floyd is doing something that the thief in um, Zork used to do that would drive you nuts. He's picking up items. Get foil. Taken. Oh, Plato's got the okay. So the detector's gonna keep beeping because Plato's got it now. <laughs> Jeez. 
So what I'm trying to do is, uh, where is the freaking room? Okay, we got to go southeast of the alley, and then we can go to the pawn shop. I was trying to, we already found it. It's not cheating. I'm just trying to find where the damn um, pawn shop is so that we can get the, um, Okay, so we're going to make our way to the alley. We're trying to get the, the spores for the balloon creature. It's no doubt that alley is the best word to describe this winding, garbage-strewn connector. Dark passages branch off in almost every direction, and the alley slopes upward to the northwest. Nearby, you hear you're really not quite ravenous, and your lips are parched. Eat goo. Mmm, that tasted just like yummy Ramosian tree mold custard. Oh, now another welder is coming. Southwest. Pawn shop. The three balls hanging by the northeastern entrance of the space uh, indicate that a villager down on his or her luck had come here to hawk some valuable possession. Some destitute spacer was so hard up that he or she actually pawned a spray can. Sitting here in the shop and has a lettering, lettering on it. Read can. The lettering on the, spore, on the spray can reads, Easy Spray Spores. A mixture of high quality spores. Lowest gas inducement levels of any brand. So northeast, northwest. Every time Floyd shows up now, the plat the detector is going to beep because we have the foil. I might need to drop the foil somewhere where I know we'll retrieve it later, so I don't go insane. I'll drop the foil in the same place the spacesuit and the twelve prong from its board are. Floyd tells Plato about a neat shortcut for calculating 7th order differentials. The detector is quietly beeping. I just need to make sure that um, Floyd doesn't start picking up other items. Studio. Uh, pet store. Okay. Save 7. Open cage. As you open the cage, your train balloon creature floats out of it. So I know where I need to go. Uh, I'm going to try to get there. So we're going to go northeast, west, west, southwest. We have to make our way to the... Um, so if I go northeast, Broadway, spray can. A dusty mist puffs from the can and begins dissipating. The Arcturian balloon creature farts in, hungrily gobbling up the spores. Northwest. Well, there are openings in almost every direction. West, makeshift corridor, spray can. A dusty mist puffs from the can and begins to spin. The Arcturian balloon creature farts in, hungrily gobbling up the spores. Get leash. The Arcturian tries to float away from you, but its buoyancy system is useless in zero-g. As you grasp the leash, it uses its lateral propulsion method in an attempt to get away. In other words, it farts right in your face. In a reflective maneuver to wave away the order, you release the leash and drop everything you're holding. So just to save time, we're going to restore slot 7. So you don't want to um, you don't want to grab the leash while you're indoors. Spray can. Oh, I hadn't opened it. On that save, I hadn't opened the cage yet. Open cage. Northeast. Spray can. West. Spray can. Floyd meanders in. You doing anything fun? Nope, same dumb, boring things. Dude, I'm leading around a farting gas monster. That seems interesting. As you cross the built boundary in the command module, the station's artificial gravity once again tugs you against the deck. Floyd and Plato follow you. Spray can. A dusty mist puffs from the can and begins dissipating. The Arcturian balloon creature farts in, hungrily grabbing up the spores. Gobbling up the spores. As the Arcturian balloon creature crosses the boundary between the command module and the village, it is caught unawares by the sudden presence of gravity. It sinks almost to the floor before it adjusts. Floyd frets about the possibility of his batteries failing. Save on slot 8. Get leash, because now we're in a gravity environment. As you grab the leash, the startled Arcturian balloon creature tries to get away by hyperinflating. Slowly, its buoyancy lifts you right off the deck. Within moments, the Arcturian is bob bobbing at the ceiling, and you're hanging two meters off the floor. Footnote 4. Boy, that looks like fun, says Floyd, peering up at you. Can Floyd try it, huh, please? Floyd, yes. Floyd whines. Enough talking. Let's play hide-or-seeker. Footnote 4. 
This is, of course, impossible. To do this, the creature would have to be an order of magnitude larger. There are two possible explanations. One, the creature actually extends part of its volume into a parallel dimension. Two, a callous disregard for scientific accuracy on the part of the author. Ha ha ha. It's hard to walk when your feet are a couple of meters from the floor. Let go of leash. You drop to the deck. The Arturian blue creature gradually floats downward until it's back at around eye level. So, if you lead the balloon creature somewhere and grab its leash, you will get elevated to the roof of the room. This is important. So if we go west again, we're at the east junction, spray can, and the creature comes in. Southwest, south junction. We have to do this quickly because now a welder is coming to kill us. Spray can, the balloon creature follows us. The welder is getting closer. Northwest, level 5. Spray can. The Arcturian balloon creature farts in, hungrily gobbling out the spores. Floyd cranes his neck to see what you're doing. Save slot 8. Oh boy, we're going to try something dangerous. The danger is that if I lead us in the wrong direction too many times, we will run out of spores in the can, and we will no longer be able to direct the balloon creature and or win the game. Up is level 4. I know where we need to go, and it's a room that we haven't visited or thought about in a long time. But there was some weird stuff going on. Uh... Wait a minute, this doesn't have a map of level 4? That's weird. You're supposed to be a freaking map of level 4. Alright, well, we'll have to um, figure out a little bit of our own. So, level 4 has the male barracks, female barracks, access to bay 3. Level 3 has the gym, theater, chapel, and laundry. We actually are trying to get to the chapel. So, if we... Um, once we get there, it might make some sense why we would need to be able to elevate. So we want to spray the can, and I'm on the wrong window. Spray can. The creature farts in. Up, level three. Spray can. Floyd mumbles about a mysterious future in which humans will have to take orders from robots. Save on slot eight. Oh boy, we got to try something here. Northwest. Laundry. Ah, damn it. Don't read the screen. Because some, yeah, a, a thing that I knew was coming is coming, but it's right in the middle of me trying to solve this puzzle. Maybe we can still do this. Because now I've gone to the chapel... But before I can do anything, the plot is kicking in. So hopefully this is not going to wreck our ability to do what we need to do with the balloon creature. Chapel. You jump half a meter off the floor when a voice begins speaking behind you. You relax when you see that it is merely Plato, But you get somewhat nervous again when you realize that he is aiming a stun ray right at your chest. In case it isn't apparent, Plato is saying, your rather pathetic, useless life is about to come to an unheralded close. He presses the trigger, and an instant numbness envelops you. As you crumple into a heap, Floyd dashes to your side, his face a mask of concern. Save. Oh boy, are we going to try something dangerous now? I think something dangerous is happening, Floyd. Nine. Look. Chapel. <laughs> this is a modest, non-denominational chapel. Hanging high above the beautiful wooden pulpit are two universal symbols of every major galactic religion. An eternal flame and a seven-pointed star. The flame flickers in the air currents. A doorway occupies the center of the east wall. The star is blinking. In fact, we need to get that star because, as it will turn out, there is an M-series diode in the star, and we need that for the detonator. But there's something more important happening right now. Plato and Floyd are both here. It seems that Floyd has a platinum detector. You can see a survival kit, a detonator, plastic bag, blah, 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 blah. Seems that, okay, because I dropped everything. It seems that Plato has a stun ray. It seems that the survival kit contains a stick of ostrich nip and a thermos bottle. It seems the plastic bag contains a cup of nectar and a vacuum taffy. Shortly I shall shoot again and paralyze your cardiac muscle. 
Naturally, this is fatal. But before I do, human, perhaps it will interest you to discover the reason for your demise and why the rest of your worthless race will soon follow. I thought he was our friend. I thought we were the Quigley to his Alan Rickman. But no, he's betraying us. You see, aeons ago, two races in another galaxy, the Xenax and the Hunji, were involved in an interstellar war. The war had raged for countless millennia before the Xenax devised an ultimate weapon, a device that would be launched into Hunji space. There, via methods beyond your comprehension, it would influence all the machines within a certain range to turn against the Hunji creators. Floyd's head is swiveling back and forth between you and Plato with a look of miserable confusion. Plato, stop. Your command is not complete. Next time, type what you want Plato to stop. Plato, help. Plato ignores you. But the device, which was shaped like a pyramid, did more than that. Once all the Hunji in the area were eliminated, the pyramid would influence the Hunji machinery to build a factory for constructing and sending forth replicas of the pyramid. These replicas would enter new Hunji regions, kill everyone, and create more replicas. Uh, sorry, I lost my place for a second. Thus, the Hunji would be destroyed by their own machines in a matter of weeks. Somehow, the Xenak pyramid never made it into Hunji space. Instead, this ultimate weapon drifted across the intergalactic gulf and was picked up by an outpost of humanity. This very station! Floyd is dashing back and forth between you and Plato, whimpering with fear. Let's save on slot 9 again. Wait. As you've certainly surmised, the pyramid has engineered the deaths of everyone on this station. You're still alive, of course, but that condition is very temporary. The building of replicas is now underway, and soon a hundred copies of this death pyramid will be shooting silently towards every corner of human-occupied space. Well, I hope the last... I hope I made the last moments of your life a bit more interesting, he raises the stun ray. Floyd, nearly in tears, his jaw quivering, wails, Please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, don't hurt Floyd's friend! Plato gives him a look of disgust. Stay out of this, Floyd. You don't understand yet. Save on slot nine. Wait... Plato takes aim with the stun gun. His hand begins to depress the trigger. Floyd bursts into tears and dashes out of the room. A beam leaps from the gun. You have died. So we want to restore. It's lot nine. There's only one way to save yourself. You are completely paralyzed. You can't do anything. But apparently you can still speak. Floyd, help me. Floyd waves his hands helplessly. Yes! I mean, no! I mean, no, no! Oh, help me, please, Floyd and Quandry! Plato takes aim with a stun gun. His hand begins to depress the trigger. Floyd suddenly leaps at the gun, knocking it out of Plato's hands. The gun skitters across the floor. Plato and Floyd both chase it, but Plato is a step faster. He leaps on top of it, rupturing the gun's power pack. The gun explodes, and Plato is blown apart. Floyd crumples to the deck, shaking all over. Tears of oil stream down his face. Pins and needles. Needles and pins. It's a happy man that grins. Sorry. That's something else. Pins and needles begin prickling in your extremities and soon spread all over your body. Within a few seconds, all your muscular control has weakened. Hug Floyd. Floyd sniffs. Please leave Floyd alone. Uh, please leave Floyd alone for a while. Search Plato. You can't see Plato here. Look. Get a regular description of the chapel. Floyd is lying on the floor sobbing. It seems that Floyd has a platinum detector. <laughs> Get all but Floyd. Survival kit taken. Detonator taken. Plastic bag taken. Spray can taken. Seven pointed star. The star is above you, beyond your reach. Ha <laughs> ha! Save. Oh boy, we're gonna try something dangerous now. Nine. Spray can. A dusty mist puffs from the can and begins dissipating. The Arcturian balloon creature appears in the doorway, stops, and hastily puffs away. Why won't it enter the room? Look. There is the universal flame. Now, you may recall earlier in the game we had a spool talking about how to, you know, maintain the church. And it kind of cut in and out and led to a voice laughing that you will die human. I believe it gave us a hint about this, but even if it didn't, there's not too many things to examine. We need to extinguish the flame. The flame is high above your head, and besides that, there doesn't seem to be a switch on the flame. Look at 
pulpit. Because the reason the balloon creature won't enter the room is it's full of hydro it's full of hydrogen. So yeah, it's pretty flammable. You discover that the pulpit seems openable. Open pulpit. Opening the pulpit reveals a switch. Flick the switch. The eternal flame goes out. Spray can. A dusty muff. Dusty muff. Ooh, I'm sorry. That was not an intentional double entendre or a Freudian slip. I just misread it. A dusty mist puffs from the can and begins dissipating. The Arcturian balloon creature farts and hungrily grabbing up, gobbling up the spores. <laughs> dusty muff. Get leash. As you grab the leash, the startled Arcturian balloon creature tries to get away by hyperinflating. And now you're hanging two meters off the floor. Get star. Taken. Drop leash. The Arcturian balloon creature gradually flows downward until it's back at around eye level. Save on slot 9. Flick switch. The eternal flame flickers back on. The Arcturian balloon creature shoots out of the chapel. Okay. I thought maybe we could blow it up. But, um, we're going to get all. Floyd, Floyd Smith. Please leave Floyd alone for, alone for a while. Oh, we didn't drop everything. Look at star. You could restrict color to the man who wears the star. It's blinking with a gentle rhythmic light. The back of the star looks openable. Open star. Opening the seven-pointed star reveals an M-series hyperdiode. Get diode. Save on slot eight now because I was saving on slot eight earlier in case things got fouled up. And I was nervous that the balloon creature would start to wander around and that we'd lose it when uh, the plot kicked in with Plato. I knew that was coming because, in fact, that was like the turn after I stopped recording two videos ago. Remember the last video I was explaining all the off-screening I did to get back up to where we were after finding out I'd made the game unwinnable by using the drill at the wrong place? Well, before figuring that out, like right after I ended a video, almost immediately, boom, Play-Doh's heel turn. So while we are on this floor, let's go north. E north. East, the balloon creature is here. Save on slot eight. Let's go back to the gym. The auto door opens sluggishly as, you, as soon as you have passed through and zooms shut, almost nipping your heels. Gym, a multifunction exercise machine sits supposedly on one side of the gym. There's a sign above it. This is going to be important later. I know we read this earlier. The exercise machine is a diagnostic frequency to communicate with each other on frequency 710. Do not bring anything which broadcasts on that frequency within range of the machine. Exercise, you do a few push-ups, get in machine. You're now in the exercise machine. Floyd says, Floyd, going exploring. See you later. He glides out of the room. Exercise. No, oh, never mind. Well, I'm not going to waste the turns. I figured that the mach the exercise machine was, like, automated and was going to try to kill us, but I guess not. So the next thing I know to try to do is to get what we need. Let's see. Look at ID. Still patrol paperwork task force ID number one four five one three five two seven one six. Floyd asks, "You doing anything fun?" Nope. North or down? North is a female barracks. That's the wrong level. Okay, we need to, uh, I thought off screen I did the bit where you up, you know, you, you get promoted by the machine in Shaded Ends, but we need to actually get into some of the, like, there's two rooms that we can't, we couldn't get into previously because we didn't have a high enough, uh, rank. There's like a card reader and we put our card in and it kicked it back out. Only one of them is actually useful. But if we go to level five... There's a, there's a single dark room that we can now uh, actually explore. So if we are back on level 5. We go up twice. We will be in a room that was previously dark that we couldn't get into.
Workshop, this is a fairly large space where much of the maintenance work for the station takes place. Some repair work visiting ships is also done here. The room is filled with all sorts of repair and fabrication machinery. Door leads south, and there's an opening to the north. You can see a 20 ohm bedister here. We'll get the bedister. I don't remember if you need those or not. Floyd accidentally bumps into you and reacts by cursing your ancestors. That's different from before. North, it is pitch black. You hope there are no grooves aboard the station. Floyd follows you. Turn on lamp. Storage. This is one of the storage areas. Exits lie to the east and south. Floyd is here, also looking around the room. It seems that Floyd has a platinum detector. You can see a jammer here. Get jammer taken east. And we're in the north corridor. Turn off lamp, because I have no idea how long it lasts. Okay, the headlamp is off. Floyd drops the platinum detector he was carrying. Look at jammer. The jammer is a black box with a short antenna. It has 20 tiny sockets on one side. The jammer, which is off, looks as if it can be set to any frequency between 0 and 1400. It is currently set to 337. So that thing about the frequency, yeah, we need to jam. There will come a point where we need to use the jammer to jam the gym machine. I can't imagine why right now, but we're going to need to do that at some point. There is uh, 20 tiny sockets, which means we need that 20 prong from its board. I can't remember where we left that. I think it's hanging around in the... Um, did we just get a bedister? 20 on bedister. Put bedister. Floyd complains about a recent assignment in the forms filing department. Put bedister in jammer? I think it's the board we gotta put in there. Unsurprisingly, the 20 on bedister doesn't fit the 20 tiny sockets. Floyd whistles tunelessly. East the PX. In the corner of the PX is a stellar patrol dispensing machine consisting of a screen, a slot, a keypad, and a hole. So if we look at the screen, we're reminded of the offerings. The only things that are left is the all-purpose timer and the large drill bit. We need that timer, but we don't have a coin. So if we go southwest, we have the north junction, east, sick bay, look. Fronted by the beds of the infirmary is the finest diagnostic equipment that unlimited style of patrol buttons can buy to the east. An ID reader indicates a security door. You can leave to the west or southeast. Floyd is here, also looking around the room. Put card in slot. Not clot. Oops. Slot. You can't see any slot here. Uh, put ID in reader. Nothing happens. Alright. Looks like I didn't... Um, Floyd produces a loud burp and fails to apologize. Looks like I did not actually remember in my off-screening to do the Shady Dance bit. Oops, sorry. Floyd not looking at where he was going to. Oh, get bored. Put bored in Jammer. Unsurprisingly, the 12 prong from its board doesn't fit the 20 tiny sockets. Ah, well, shit, where's the 12 prong? I know we got a 12 and a 20, so we're going to drop the board because it doesn't help us. And we're going to go east, no, we're going to go west, we're going to go southeast. Shady Dan's! <sighs> okay, so apparently we forgot to use the machine. So, uh, put card in machine. Card fits neatly in the opening. Floyd says, Floyd, go exploring. See you later. He glides out of the room. Look at machine. Inspection reveals only two unnotable features. A keypad and a very slim Z slot. The machine is currently off. Turn on machine. Machine begins boring lightly. A voice from the machine says, Current rank is 6. Lieutenant, first class. Enter new rank on the keypad. Type 9. New rank is 9. Hyper Admiral. Floyd comes in and says, You're not doing anything fun. Get ID. Taken northwest. Get board north. Drop board because we don't need it, so I'm going to drop it in a room that we don't care about anymore. Floyd is mumbling about humans taking orders from robots. Floyd stamps on, stops on your foot for no apparent reason. Uh, I want to get back to, to sick bay to showcase something. Uh, oh, okay, and I messed it up. So if we go northwest, then east. Put ID in reader. 
security door slides open. Floor here now. East. Brig. This is a modest prison with three cells. The only exit is west. Hey, wait for Floyd. Search cells. You can't search a cell. West. So there's actually nothing to get in the brig, but you do need to solve a puzzle to have access. In fact, what we really needed, the, the only reason we needed to up, upgrade our rank is to do something on a different level. I believe it is level 6. Yeah, so if you're really paying attention, you would remember that in level 6, there was a door that we couldn't open. So let's go there. First of all, we'll save on slot 8. And we're going to the elevator shaft. The elevator shaft is shielded from stage artificial gravity field. You float helplessly in the shaft. After a few milliseconds of use of flailing, you decide someone in the elevator might be a good idea, and you pull yourself out of the shaft back to the 1G environment. Press button. And we get in the elevator. Keep advertising the number of the level you want to go to. Type. Six. Elevator starts to jerk, bumping against the ceiling, then moves down the shaft, stopping suddenly and not quite at the level with your new floor west, level six. Okay, so the elevator's not killing us yet, but you can see a difference in how it behaves. We go to the end of the corridor on level six. There's a door to the north, but the door to the north has an ID reader next to it. Put ID in reader. North. Armory. This is a secondary weapon storage deck, but the only weapon deck on a station with no military submodule. Exit south. You can see a fuser beam zap gun here. Floyd bounces in. Hey, wait for Floyd, he yells. The security door glides shut. Get laser. I don't know the word laser. Get gun. You're juggling about just as much stuff as you can manage. Inventory. You got an ID card, a jammer. 20 arm bedister, an M series hyperdiode, 7 pointed star. I gotta drop the star. Spray can, gotta drop that. Plastic bad detonator and survival kit. Got the nectar and the taffy in the bag. This survival kit contains a stick of ostrich nip and a thermos bottle. You're wearing a headlamp, patrol uniform, and a chronometer. Drop star and can. Floyd produces a loud burp and fails to apologize. Get gun. Floyd tells an off color joke about the bizarre mating habits of flesh and blood creatures. Put Bedister, no, Hyperdiode, in detonator. Done. Close detonator. Okay, the detonator's not closed. Floyd accidentally bumps into you and reacts by cursing your ancestors. Let's save on slot 8. Oh boy, are we going to try something dangerous now? We just might, Floyd. We just might. All right, folks. So, with the help of our friend, the balloon creature, we managed to get the seven-pointed star, which got us a diode, which will allow the detonator to work. But we still need the fuse, which is available for some reason from a vending machine, which means we need a coin. How are we going to get a coin? Well, folks, with any luck, we'll figure that out in the next video. Hmm. I'm the Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more Station Fall.